Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to give you a very quick tutorial on how to make a helix coil or a circular coil for wireless power transfer or any other applications that you are using uh, with Maxwell and Soft Maxwell or in HFSS uh, software. Um, I'm going to go start with Maxwell and uh, you can basically copy and paste whatever you see here uh, pretty much uh, all of it uh, in HFSS. These are the same. Uh, these are the softwares of the same company, and basically you can copy and paste everything there in HFSS. And the only difference would be that the simulation, the setup uh, uh, for the analysis in the HFSS would be different than the Maxwell, since they use different model, different engine, and um, that would be the only difference. But for uh, designing the structures and like. And making the environment and the model, you're basically uh, using the same uh, software and it will be the same for HFSS as well. So I'm going to start with the Maxwell and uh, as you can see, uh, I have nothing in front of me except an uh, uh, empty uh, blank project of Maxwell. First thing I want to do is I'm going to insert a 3D design in Maxwell by clicking on the icon. And as you can see, it's pretty... Uh, empty and blank so now the good thing about Maxwell is you can always find a lot of uh, predefined free comes with the software um, primitives and structures under the draw menu and user defined primitive and system lib and over here you have example of a rectangular spiral uh, which is a good example for RFID kind of um, applications uh, I didn't find it very uh, helpful for wireless power transfer because the spiral that you can find here uh, doesn't have any empty space in the middle and that will make the inductance of the spiral very small and and so is the coupling between the, these two spiral will not be very good so I didn't find it very well for a wireless power transfer uh, the next thing you can find is a, bond, a list, a huge list of very complicated uh, structures for uh, designing and, and uh, basically simulating the motors, uh, transformers, and uh, things like this, like linear motor as well. All of these uh, models that are prepared here are DLL files that you can change the parameters and you can have a new model. And uh, they are pretty... Um, uh, complicated models that they basically are offering here uh, for example uh, if you go with this model you can see it's uh, uh, it has a lot of uh, design into it and you can change the number of um, teeth here and uh, the height and everything and you can use it for your uh, modeling of the shaft or uh, uh, any other application you're looking for um, so I'm going to uh, delete this one and go to the main uh, uh, part of the course, which was uh, designing a helix uh, coil. So you can find the helix coil under the third menu here, which is called uh, segmented helix. Uh, if you go here, you have two sub-menus, polygon helix, helix and rectangular helix. The difference between these two is the one on the top is a more generic version of the bottom one. The bottom one has a, will give you a helix which has the cross section of rectangular and you cannot change the, cha the cross section. However, for the polygon helix, you can have um, basically the rectangular, but it's basically a square, or you can have a, a triangular or circular or polygon with whatever number of uh, uh, polygon you want for the cross section. The rectangular helix, by the way, has one feature that the polygon helix cannot offer, and that is you can change the width and the thickness of the, uh, the subsection. And so if you're designing this uh, helix to be on a printed circuit board, you can basically change the thickness of it, which would be the copper thickness on your PCB, and see the effect of that. And that would be the only difference that I found between these two. So I'm going to go and start with the polygon helix and uh, and uh, 
uh, and you can see when you click on that you have this uh, user and defined primitive operation window uh, will be open uh, I'm gonna change this uh, menus here uh, to have a better real estate for the description here and uh, as you can see you have uh, a couple of uh, parameters you can change for your coil uh, the first uh, parameter here is the the number of polygon for your cross section when you put four it will give you a square when you go three it will give you a triangle and if you put zero it will give you a circular um, uh, cross section so it will basically uh, uh, emulate or simulate uh, a wire so if you are using leads wire or any other kind of wire you can put zero as the cross section of the wire is a circular and the next one is the radius of this uh, cross section so one millimeter is pretty big and I don't think it's very um, close to the reality so I'm going to put uh, 0.5 um, which is still is pretty big but if you are considering to use that as a transmitter you probably want to have run a lot of currents into the transmitter coil so to make sure that the coil is not getting very warm you need to make the the radius uh, uh, thick enough and so that's why I'm going with the 0.5 millimeters uh, the next one here is the start helix radius which will be the first turn the radius of the first turn so when you add more turns it can either go up in the z direction or go uh, uh, on the on the surface of x y by increasing the uh, the radius of each turn as I can uh, I will show you later so uh, let's leave this one for uh, 10 millimeters one centimeters or actually we can make it five millimeters to make it more realistic and uh, this one is pretty important so before I go and explain what is the radius change I will go and explain the pitch so the pitch is the uh, the distance, the height of the helix in z direction. So when the pitch is three, it means that it would have three turns or two turns, as it is stated here, two turns with a similar uh, radius chain, uh, radius because the radius change is zero, and it goes up for three millimeters in z directions. For many of the wireless power transfer coils you don't have the, the pitch in Z because it's basically flattened on one surface and uh, therefore you want to put zero for the pitch and if you put zero for the pitch you have to uh, change the radius after each turn and in order to do that the minimum change that this um, predefined structure will accept which is also makes sense is twice at least you should have twice the radius of uh, the polygon so if my radius of polygon is 0.5 millimeter the minimum radius change if the pitch is zero would be one millimeter so I'm gonna say 1.1 and the point one is uh, actually 0 0.05 and the 550 micrometer is going to account for the um, basically um, isolation around the, the each wire and uh, that will basically account for that so that uh, being said so now we know everything about this this model as I I want to go again from the top the zero uh, basically says that it's going to be a circular uh, cross-section 0.5 gives you the radius of the wire for example if you are going to um, uh, basically uh, simulate the wire uh, coil the helix radius here is the first radius and then if you have for example 10 turns it would add up uh, with this radius change at the end as you can see uh, when I press OK and as I said 5 is the first radius uh, this is how each turn will increase each after each turn the radius of the entire thing entire coil will, uh, will increase the pitch is zero because I don't want to have uh, my helix to go on the Z direction and the number of turns is basically the number of turns I put 10 the next thing here is a segment per each term and if you want to have a more accurate 
uh, uh, representation of the coil you want to have more uh, than 36 uh, but over here uh, each each turn has 360 degrees and then we say 36 it means that per 10 degrees we have one segment and uh, we basically simulate uh, each 10 degrees with one segment so it wouldn't be exactly curvature as we want it's not a perfect curve but um, it's each 10 percent in each 10 degrees you have one segment and uh, if you put zero here then the direction of the turn will change from uh, uh, left hand to right hand okay now let's see what we get with this result with these parameters I'm gonna press OK and it will take a few seconds okay there we go uh, to generate the coil now if you look at this we have a coil as you can see uh, which is having 10 uh, uh, turns it starts from here and as you can see the first uh, the first turn has a radius of 5 millimeter and uh, it will end up here uh, after 10 turns and you can basically find what is exact location of the second terminal if you uh, turn this uh, coil you can see that the cross section here is a circle and that's the definition of zero for the number of polygons uh, if you double click on um, actually uh, if you click on the polygon helix the helix that we just made you can change it to for example whatever name that we want uh, let's call it uh, TX uh, as a trans trans transmitter and um, you can right click on that and assign a material and I'm gonna go and find uh, copper and press OK so that would be the copper now and uh, if you double click on the create user defined part you can uh, change the uh, parameters that you define if you are not satisfied with it so one thing I'm going to change and uh, want to show you is if you change the polygon segment from 0 to 4 what will happen so if I change it to 4 you will get instead of the circle you will get square there we go you can see the square here um, if I go and uh, zoom out, you can see the you can see that the cross section here is um, and a square. So that would be uh, the end of this uh, tutorial. I'm gonna give you more uh, tutorials on how to simulate and find the efficiency of a transmitter with this properties uh, in next uh, tutorials thank you very much for watching this